Hi YouTube, I am back with one of my rants. <laughs> sorry, I'm like sitting in a different setting. Not sorry. I should be allowed to sit in a different setting. Um, I'm not in my bedroom because it's a bit warm in there. It's weird. I feel like my bedroom always gets really warm. I don't know what that's about. I did some research about it and it says that because of the bed or beds and all the cushioning in a bedroom, it can get warmer than other parts of the house. But I'm like, there's cushion and sofas too. I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. I do apologize for the lighting if it's a little darker. Um, I just wanted to come on here and rant a little bit since I haven't really uploaded a video where I'm just talking about life or anything. But something's been on my mind. And that something is purpose. P-U-R-P-O-S-E. I don't know why I spelled it out because I probably won't even edit this video. But <laughs> I don't know. It's It was my birthday recently. Libra. And I don't know. I just started thinking about like what is a person's purpose? Like you can have dreams. But like dreams are dreams and i think sometimes we all get mixed up with dreams but like maybe from childhood you should be focused on purpose or maybe we should just be allowed to live i feel like our society definitely focuses focuses a lot on attaining wealth and attaining like I don't know just the tippity top but like what about focusing on just being happy being kind to others and realizing what our purpose may be and following along that path like for me personally because I don't want this video to be too long um for me personally I always thought that my purpose would be to be a fashion designer um ew as I grab my shirt I was just fixing my shirt y'all <laughs> I always thought, I don't know, like ever since I was a like, young child, I've been really into like art and drawing. Um, and luckily I have parents who, you know, are very supportive when it comes to like, my child's creative, like my mom is super creative. Um, and I think it just like runs in the blood. But anyways, um, I popped out being creative as well. And I will never forget, like, I originally, when I was a child, wanted to be a cartoonist. Got very into that. And I was like, I'm gonna be a cartoonist! Um, didn't realize I would just be a living cartoon. But um, then I wanted to be a car designer, furniture designer. I've always wanted to be a designer. I've always been really intrigued by design and not just art, but like the dual purpose of it. Like I've just always been attracted to that. And then as I grew older, I wanted to be a fashion designer. Um, I was obsessed with like catalogs in my early teens. My mom would have, always have catalogs coming in. Um, I was obsessed with watching fashion television. If any of you grew up in the 80s or 90s, you would definitely know what fashion television is. I'm pretty sure it's not still on TV. I think everything's online now. But I was just like really intrigued and obsessed with things that involve design. So I went to school for fashion design. Um, I have a big southern family and no one has really left the nest. Um, <laughs> my entire family um once they were relocated but yes and I was the only one that flew the nest and I went to school um just a state over um because my parents did not want me to go too far sorry for the noise in the background if you can hear it but yeah my parents did not want me to go too far um nationwide rather nationwide but no they didn't want me to go distance wise too far from them because we are very paranoid black people <laughs> they were always just like what if something happens to you what if something happens we'll be so far away and so when i was in school just a state over i decided to get a job at urban outfitters to save up to move myself to new york city because that had always been a dream of mine i grew up like obsessed with like warhol and like basquiat and like keith herring and just like the whole art scene of new york um the music of new york obsessed with delight um lou reed like all those great amazing talented people um from new york and 
you know, New York just always had like a scene that was just so interesting and definitely full of artists back then. And I just like wanted to be in it. So I was just like, you know, that's the only way I can get an internship that's like valid. I feel like this is so dark. I wonder if I should change angles. Can you see me? Yeah, anyways. <laughs> so I saved that money privately and secretly to move myself to New York. And once I saved that money, my parents were like, oh my God, oh my God, what? And they were like, well, we guess we support you. <laughs> this lady totally supported me. And I moved to New York. Long story short, I started interning with Heatherette, um, looked them up. They were super fun back in the day. Um, let me see, it's time to try this angle. I'm like, if it's bothering me, it might be bothering me. That looks better. Man, it does look better. Mm, yeah so anyways i feel like i'm gonna interview but no i started interviewing interviewing interning um with heather brad and the thing about all of that is the fashion industry is full of interning and it's just like do you really expect someone to intern for six years? How, how like how do you expect them to pay rent if they're full time interning? And even with part time interning, it's like it's weird. Like I will say from my experience, I was interning at Heatherette and I, you know, transferred to Urban Outfitters in New York City. And I will never forget, like, my job was part-time at Urban Outfitters, but they kept pushing you towards full-time hours. I'm sure other Urban Outfitter employees can definitely speak on this. I don't know how much has changed, because um, I feel like I should be almost against the law. But they'll have you, like, working basically full-time. Yeah, that has changed. They basically, back then, had me working full-time hours. So I was working like 40 hours. My internship with um, Heatherette had ended. So, you know, you get kind of like, it's very sneaky. Because they'll see that you're a great worker. Like, I am a really reliable person. Like, I was never late for work. I enjoyed working. I enjoyed my coworkers and everything. I've always been a shy child, but once I moved to college, um, I came out of my shell and I started like going out and stuff. And especially like working with um, Heatherette, it was like, you know, you went out parties and stuff and people like loved you and like they loved me. And it was just like really fun, exciting environment, but I never got unfocused. I never got like off the path of like what I really wanted to do and what I came to New York City for. But unfortunately, rent. Rent comes into factor. Like people expect you to intern for so long with no pay. How do you expect people to pay rent and live? Shelter is extremely important. So <laughs> just like, it was crazy to me. So it's just like, you know, I went around because I read a book and I suggest you all read it too if you're interested in fashion. It is a very old book. It's called The Fashionable Savages. And I went around um, the garment district to all the like higher end um, offices because I researched them and went to the library because back then I don't think you can look it up really easily on your phone. Yeah, back then, no. I think we were carrying sidekicks back then. It was like the early 2000s. It's crazy to think about. But like, <laughs> but like um, yeah. I remember I had like map quests. Does anyone remember map quests? And I would have the printouts and I would just like walk around to like um, Oscar de la Renta, Donna Karen, like all these places. And I was like, hey, I'm looking for a job. I'm open to interning. I went to Betsy Johnson's office. That was fun. Um, but like they all wanted you to be like a full-time intern. And I was just like, how am I expected to be a full-time intern? Because like, how am I supposed to be a full-time intern when I have to pay rent? It was just a really like, and I'm sure I'm not the only one that has dealt with this. It's crazy out there. But yeah, they wanted me to be a full-time intern. And that's one of the reasons I say that like people that come from money, and I don't like I don't mean this in a mean way, but they um it's good to realize your privilege. Like people that come from money, you kind of have it set up for life if you decide to go the right path, quote unquote. Because like you People that come from money, 
you can have your rent paid while you're interning for six years. Like, because they expect, like, interning, it looks like a job, rest, you know, it looks like, you know, you have qualifications. So it's like, you can intern for like four, like, let's be, let's say two to six years. You can intern for two to six years and it shows you have experience in the fashion industry. You are getting paid interning full time. So it's just like, you know, it's like, <laughs> it's like, like who was paying your rent? But like, that's beyond the point. It's just that like, you're kind of set up to be, in the industry that you want to be in and making good money after you've interned. People that don't come from money who actually have to pay their own rent, like, you have to work. You have to find a way to pay rent. Um, and not only that, student loans. It's fucking crazy. <sighs> Anyways, so my path, I do feel like my path did get derailed. And sometimes that makes me sad, but not sad because I am really grateful for the experiences I have had in my life. And we have to focus on that. Like my mom always says that a person's book is already written as in their life is already like planned out in some way. And it's just like, you know, you can go different paths and directions, um, but just try to stay focused. And I mean, I tried to stay focused. And I tried to like twist my mind that like, you know, working at Urban Outfitters is still kind of been in the fashion industry. And I mean, it kind of was. I mean, Urban Outfitters is kind of awful, but you know what I mean? Like, kind of was, um, you know, working in that industry. But unfortunately, once you're in a specific pocket, such as like retail, you are kind of stuck in that pocket. I've noticed that people will look at a resume and be like, oh yeah, you have experience, but you don't have experience in this department. I'm like, but I went to school and everything for this department. I have experience. Just unfortunately, no one, not a yeah, are giving me access into the gates. So I kind of like decided upon myself when I was younger that that wasn't going to be my path. I started DJing. I started just like working in retail and working my way up in fashion retail. And, you know, I started working at Topshop, all these other places. I don't want to get into it. But I definitely always wondered back to the point of what my purpose was because I am definitely a nerd I was always a nerdy child I always like grew up like reading and researching things I loved going to the library anytime my mom had like a doctor's appointment that was near a library I was like you drop me off at the library and I just like go to the library would read I would research and it just like made me so happy to just like learn new things and when it came to music, I've always been drawn to music. So I really got into like, I've always been into collecting records ever since I was a little kid. You can reference my Prince Purple Rain video about all of that. But like, I just love the researching art and music. Love that. <laughs> it's just like, I need employment in that field of like fashion, art or something. But unfortunately I didn't work out that way. Um, but you just like sit there sometimes and you wonder, what is my purpose? I should be doing something, not that I'm like, I'm totally grateful for my employment. I'm totally grateful for my coworkers and everything. But you can't help to wonder. I feel like it's a human thing to wonder, what is your purpose? Um, I feel like we are all pretty much sent here with a purpose. Um, I don't know though. Because once you're derailed from what you think your purpose is, it's just like, girl, what do I do next? You know? I did start DJing um, when I lived, oh, I started DJing when I lived in the state over. Yeah, I started DJing when I was in college, actually. That was so fun. And this was like back in the day. I'm not saying back in the day, like I'm like 80. <laughs> This was during when people had like cassette tapes. Not, oh no, that sounds really old too. I'm sorry, y'all. We had C, we had CDs. CDs 
were the main type of, I'll just say it. Um, I went to college in the early 2000s, so yeah. So, but I was always attracted to like vintage um, media and I was really into cassette tapes. It just so happened my very good friend at the time, he had a truck that had a cassette player. So I would make him like mix tapes and stuff. It was so fun. And then I started DJing at this club there and that was really fun. Um, I was doing CDJs back then. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. I was doing CDJs and vinyl. And then when I moved to New York City, I started going out. I was like going to like Miss Shakes parties and stuff like that. And then, you know, I was just like going out. It was like so fun. See, like I had great experiences and I'm so glad I landed in New York City when I did because there were so many years to still have fun. I mean, some people, you know, still have fun there now. I'm not knocking it. But I'm just saying for me personally, I, for me personally and what I expected of New York City, I'm glad I moved there when I did, is what I would say. So yeah, it was really great. It was a lot of like connecting with people, but not in like an artificial way, but actually like connecting with people. I still have friends who I used to go to parties, who I met at parties back then. I still have very close friends that I met at parties. And it's just like so interesting. And I started DJing in New York City, and it was just, like, really fun. I had such fun times. Um, but, you know, you just still wonder what your purpose is. So, <laughs> so I started doing, you know, I came back to where I'm from, and I never had friends here. I had friends, like, because I mostly, like, high, last place of social activity I had here was high school. So none of those people I know from high school. I had one friend I really loved, and I somehow could not find her. She actually dropped out of high school. She was amazing. Her name was Patricia. She dropped out of high school, and... I just, like, never heard from her after that. She just, like, went wandering. I think she dropped out of high school. She ran away. It was totally like a coming-of-age movie. She ran away, and I just, like, never heard from her. And this is, like, before cell phones and social media. What did we have back then? I feel like we may have had live journal and stuff like that, but she was never on any of that stuff. She was so fucking cool. She, like, turned me on the Bar House and The Cure, and she was just, like, so fucking awesome. Anyways, people used to talk shit about her, too. But it was, like, talk shit in a way, like, I'm just, like wait you're cool like they used to be like she's a witch don't talk to her and i was like that's cool <laughs> like, she's a lesbian don't talk to her and i was just like wait that's cool shut the fuck up you know <laughs> she was awesome anyways um yeah that was pretty much the last real like friend that i had in here um and that was like let's just say over a decade ago and she's just like i remember i would mail like i was write letters to her with like illustrations and stuff and include a little cassette tapes because we just love mixtapes and yeah i just never really heard from her ever again which is really sad but all of this to say you know i moved here and i didn't really have any friends so here where i'm at and I don't know. I'm just like, man, maybe you should venture out. But, like, nowadays, when you go out, people don't really talk to each other. People just, like, be on their phones. Like, it's such a weird time in history. So, it's just like, what is the point? I'm going to go someplace and spend a lot of money. I did go to um, a museum event that was really cool. But, like I said, I feel like people nowadays, they talk to the people they know. And then they, like, use their phone. I don't know. All of this is said, um... It kind of derailed me mentally. I got, like, really depressed about it. Um, I never really told anyone about it. Like, I would tell my mom, but she never really understood. She's like, well, you got us. You know, moms, you know, they're amazing, but sometimes they don't understand. Um, and yeah, basically, I applied at a record store um, that I loved going to here. And unfortunately, and I told them, I was just like, oh my God, if you ever have it, because I applied, but like they weren't hiring at the time. And I was just like, if you're ever hiring, because like I wanted to like break in more so into music and doing something here with music. And so it's like, oh my God, working at a record store is like a dream to me mentally. 
I probably shouldn't because of temptation, but I would love working there. Of course, I didn't tell them that, but I was like, I would love working there. I knew so much about music and I knew I knew so much about music also. And I was like, if you're ever hiring, let me know. And then they fast forward like three months after saying that they were hiring and they didn't let me know. So I just went ahead and applied anyway and I never heard back from them about it. And I was just like, wow, okay, cool. That's cool. Fuck you. Um, sorry, but I'm just like rejection. No one likes to be rejected, especially from like a job or something. Like that's bullshit. My resume is full. And my friend was like, maybe that's why I didn't hire you because you have so much experience. But I fucking hate that reasoning. Cause what are you gonna hire um someone who's like got no experience and then they just quit on you because they say like oh if you have a lot of because people say if you have a lot of experience then you may not like you may quit the job anytime and go to another job no bitch i'm reliable i stay on my jobs for a very long time like why would i want to if i'm happy why would i want to live you know what i mean it's just like <laughs> it's just so bizarre that whole reasoning oh you have so much experience you're gonna leave i feel like everything works out for a reason though because I feel like the pay probably would have been really low and I'm just not gonna accept like even a part-time job that's lower than what I know I should be getting paid I will say that I would sacrifice a little but it would only be on the weekends that I could work something that's lower than what I know I can survive with and am worth anyways then I applied at um, a bar that's re like opening soon, um, and they ignored me. And I was just like, ugh, whatever. So I was just like, fuck this. This feels like fucking high school all over again. So it was just like, you know, and it's like, oh, no, you know, let's hire the popular kid or something. You know what I mean? Like, no, fuck you, you know? Sorry my language. But this is a bit. How many minutes am I into it? Um, this is pretty long. Well, this is be a long one. So <laughs> Like, purpose, like, that all got me really down. Feeling, like, rejected when you know you're good at something and you're worth it and you could be a great asset to a company and then you don't even know why you were rejected. It hurt. It was, like, and I'm saying all of this because I know I'm not the only one out there that has felt it. Um... You're not alone. It hurts. But you also got to keep on trucking. And that is one of the models that has got me through so much. Because I deal with depression. And keep on trucking. And the sun is going to come out tomorrow. Those are two we got to remember. Um, and yeah. And then it's funny because like I just decided to... Because... At the bar, I wanted to, like, DJ. And me as a DJ... I love sharing music. And I love storytelling through DJ. It has already always been one of my favorite things. I am not the type of DJ that will just go and do a lot of tricks. I'm not the type of DJ that would go and play a minute of a song. I am... Maybe not the DJ that will perfectly beat match every single track. I'm not. I come from an older way of DJing, I will say. And that's not an excuse. I love the way I play music. Um, I have fun. And I hope the people around me are having fun. And not trying to analyze every little speck of technicality. I feel like that has become a new thing in DJing, especially with the new technology that we are, you know, we have. I love and appreciate the DJs of the past, like Larry Levon, um, Guy Cuevos. I probably <laughs> pronouncing his name wrong. Um, there's just so many amazing DJs. Shep Pettibone was amazing and when you listen to their mixes even dj kiyoki when you listen to their mixes it's not perfect but what they are doing is they're sharing music they are sharing joy and they are making you dance you know what i mean fuck perfection 
humans are not perfect. All of a sudden, there's this expectation for us to be computers. There's this expectation of math coming into art. And I mean, yes, it does in some way, like architecture and stuff, but we can also just have fun. So <laughs> I decided, I was just like, oh my God, like one of the things I've always wanted to do is share my vinyl collection. Because I've been collecting records since I was a teenager and I have so many and I'm just like, I'm just listening to them here alone. So it was one of the reasons I decided to start like doing the come into my house vinyl sessions because I was just like oh my god I want to like that's one of my creative outlets like being creative with music and like DJing even though I don't call those DJ sessions those are only vinyl sessions so keep that in mind as well um because DJing with vinyl is a whole beast but I <laughs> my best and like the most important thing is storytelling and having fun and I enjoy it so much and that is what is important I enjoy pulling the records and so I'm pulling clothes as a stylist or pulling books for research or pulling books as a teacher I fucking enjoy it it brings me so much joy <laughs> what is important so and I hope it brings other people's people joy that views it view it views that view it and that is what makes me happy and i enjoy it and i am so looking forward to the halloween special i'm kind of want to do two two or three halloween specials to be honest with you because i love the dark music i love the dark tones i love the atmospheric i just love it i know my first one or maybe my only one i'm not sure coming up of the vinyl sessions um for halloween we'll have the mother and father of dark music as i like to call them not just goth music but dark music and you can feel free to guess down in the comments who i think they are please do because i would feel like that's super fun but once you like hear it it's like you know you may learn something new as well and that's what i love about music it's like a whole like creating a cyclone and dipping you into it and just like you're seeing the cyclone and you're seeing all this music pass by but then like once you hear an artist that you've never heard of you can research that artist and learn about even more artists that is what like you know one of the artists that did that for me was bjork because once i got really into bjork as a kid watching her on mtv the human behavior video it opened me up to so much more music it opened me up to sugar cubes it opened me it just opened she opened me up to so much music also the people that she used to have remixed back then like lfo um Altecra, i think did it maybe they didn't do one for her. anyways it became a whole like you know genre of music that i got exposed to because of one artist it's amazing so it's just like that type of thing brings me happiness and i'm never the type of person that is um i forgot what they call it you know the type of person that's kind of like bougie about music when they're like oh you never heard of that you never heard of that you never heard of that i'm never that type of person because i'm like i don't know where you come from i don't know what your background is i don't know how you what what music your parents listened to as a kid i don't even know if you had access to tv like but i'm exposing you to it now so this is fun i might be like oh yeah you never heard of that but i'll not be like you never heard of that no i'm being excited and you've never heard of it because it's like a whole new world that you can be thrown into from one or two artists it's crazy anyways that is my spiel um i don't think we're supposed to know our purpose i think it's just supposed to develop over time i'm still trying to figure out my purpose but i feel like society also becomes a factor because society can hold you back from your purpose but you gotta just keep you gotta keep trucking <laughs> like for me i just like made i knew i had access to youtube i knew i had this little youtube channel hi to all my subscribers i appreciate you so much and i appreciate your comments and your likes so much i feel like it's a little like little hub here um and i hope to one day you know expand it and somehow get on the algorithm and it just grow and grow don't know when that's gonna happen where it grows and grows and grows somehow i get on the little youtube algorithm and it's just like oh my god you got 10k views you know what i mean i don't know when that's gonna happen but i'm grateful for like the 100 views i'm grateful for the 40 the 50 to 60 views so um yeah i knew i had this little this little channel here or whatever they call it yeah channel and so <laughs> 
wait you know i'm just gonna like try to figure out some technical way to hook up my turntables because i have two turntables i have multiple turntables but i have two turntables they are cheapers they are not technics i wish they were technics i wish one day that i will have technic Technic, Technics, SO1200, whatever they're called. I really wish one day to have those. Um, I don't have the best mixer. I don't have the best mixer. Got one off of Amazon for pretty cheap. And I just hooked it up, figured out a way to do it, and I made my little hub here. Because I was, like, fiending for a creative outlet again. Because I, like, DJing in New York City and in Brooklyn, like, almost every weekend was such... A good creative outlet when you work in like a field where you have to deal with strangers all week who are like angry sometimes um via like you know customer service or social media for like a company um you need that creative outlet and i mean at least i do and i happy to have built it i'm so grateful for all of those that watch and comment and enjoy it um like i said don't expect perfection but expect big fun because that's what i'm always trying to serve up because we live in a society that can be really dark and we all need a little dash of fun a little dash of fun so <laughs> Like, even if I'm playing something, like, really serious, I would still try to, like, make it fun. Like, you know what I mean? So, I hope you guys enjoy it. I really do. I will try to do more videos where I'm just rambling. Like, now, I can't believe how long this video has become is one of my, like, sayings. I could write a t-shirt with that. I can't believe how long this video has become. Um... But yeah, do what you enjoy, as long as you're not hurting others. And if you are assisting with the planet in any way, <laughs> that is great. I feel like, you know, playing music and stuff for myself and others and turning people on to new music, I feel like that's helping a little bit. And I enjoy it. But yeah, do what you enjoy. Try not to focus too much on your purpose but always try to like somehow figure or factor in what your purpose might be. I feel like that's really important. All right, well, I'm gonna end this video because this is going really long. I feel like there was other things I wanted to talk about, but this is the nutshell of it and this is what was meant to be said. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe if you aren't already subscribed and I'll see you in the next one. And if you have any questions, put them down below in the comments and I will see you next time. Bye.